preach to us tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's give a hand clap of praise unto God. Come on, stand to your feet and go ahead and give him a little bit of praise. He's worthy in this place. He's already moved. He's already uh, settled in this place already. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. In life's road, there have been many times where I did not know where I was going or why I was where I was. Here lately, I've been having this little nervous laugh. Sometimes you'll see me smile, and I'll laugh, and I'll just be laughing for no reason. And I'll clue you in while I'm laughing. Because God has opened up the vision in my mind and in my heart, and I have known that this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. And I don't know if you've ever been there, but whenever all the lights come on, and you can see everything around you, you realize that this message is not only ordained, but it is exactly where I am supposed to be tonight. And that gives me not only hope, but that lets me know that what he said, that he predestined before he knew me, before I ever was formed in my mother's womb, it gives me hope knowing that God's got it, that God has got it, God has got it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, don't get Pentecostal on me and get that deer caught in headlights look just because some tongues went poor. I know how it works. Huh? Just because God spoke to us. Sister Betty, I'm going to tell you right now a word of God for you. There is something that just broke in you about five or so minutes ago. I'm going to tell you right now, sister, I felt it whenever it did. It felt like somebody pulled the drain on a tub. There's about to be some things that are going to open up in your family and in your life. There's some things coming. All because you're obedient to the word of God. You're obedient to the word of God. That's why. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whew, hallelujah. Well, I love, I love it. I love it. I love it. You know, we can get uncomfortable sometimes in this place. You know what that really is? That's that flesh. <laughs> That's that flesh wanting, wanting to override you. Want to go ahead and put it in autopilot. Want to go ahead and just say, let's just do a little sermon. Do me a little sermon, Pastor. Go ahead and preach me a little bit, and we'll, we'll go ahead and play the end credit song. We'll go ahead and do all that, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll get a little bit of that going, and, and then we'll go on home and be like we was when we first come here. But I'm telling you right now, if you thought that's what was going to happen tonight, you have stepped into the wrong service. Now, it's the right service because it's ordained by God, but it's the wrong service if you thought you was going to get what you wanted. God is trying to give you something more than you ever could have asked for. I believe that. I believe that. You have the word. Somebody please kill that piano music. Uh, if you have your uh, Bibles, go ahead and you can look on the screen. But I'm going to read out of the Message Bible at first. Numbers chapter 11. We're going to read 4 through 6 and then 30 through 34. 4 through 6 says, The riffraff among the people had a craving, and soon they had the people of Israel whining. Why can't we have meat? We ate fish in Egypt and got it free. To say nothing of the cucumbers and melons and the leeks and the onions and garlic. But nothing tastes good out here. All we get is manna, manna, manna. Verse 30. Then Moses and the leaders of Israel went back to the camp. And a, a wind set in motion by God swept quail in from the sea. They piled up to a depth of about three feet in the camp. As far out as a day's walk in every direction. All that day and night and into the next day, the people were out gathering quail, huge amounts of quail. Even the slowest person among them gathered at least 60 bushels. They spread them out all over the camp for drying. But while they were still chewing the quail and had hardly swallowed the first bite, God's anger blazed out against the people. He hit them with a the terrible plague. They ended up calling that place Kibroth Hateva which means graves of the craving. They were buried, the people who craved meat. 1 Peter, New Living Translation, chapter 2, 1 through 3. So get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech. Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. 
Cry out for this nourishment now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. And the last scripture, 2 Chronicles 7, 14 in the Amplified says, And my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek, crave, require as a necessity my face and turn from their wicked way. Then I will hear from them. I will hear them from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Lord Jesus, right now, Lord, you've already spoken in this place. Lord, I'm going to ask you right now. We've already asked for forgiveness. We have broken the ground of our heart. Lord, right now, let this seed fall on fertile ground, that we not just be hearers of the word, but that we be doers. Lord, and by time, Lord, we leave here, we leave not only new creatures, but on a new path with a new set of, of ideas, Lord. Lord, help us to crave your word, to crave your will tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. If you're going to preach to me, you can go ahead and say amen and sit down. Got that first amen out the way. Cravings. My uh, title tonight is My Cravings. Show them that picture. That's, you got to get that picture up there. Yeah. My Cravings. I don't know about you. I posted it the other day, but uh, it was something to the effect that, you know, I don't know I, I, what it is right now, but what I could really use is about 10 pounds of crawfish. And I don't know about you, I haven't really been, I haven't really had a whole lot of crawfish in the last couple of years. But when I looked at that picture, I thought, man, I could use that in my life. My cravings. Cravings are defined as an intense, urgent, or abnormal desire or longing. Not only are they very common, but they are also arguably one of the most intense feelings you can experience when it comes to food. Some believe that cravings are caused by nutrient deficiencies and view them as the body's way to correct them. That's what they call cravings. Now, I read to you in the first reading about the children of Israel. They just come out of Egypt. We find ourselves a lot of times in this place. It's good to see Sister Veronica here. We find that not only have they come out of a great thing, but there, there's, a, there's a promise that they have. But yet, while in the wilderness, they crave meat. Now, I don't know exactly what manna is, but if you look it up, it was like a grainy substance, and they balled it, and they patted it, and made it in the cake. They said it was like a delicious delicacy when they got done. Come from God, fell out of the sky. Ain't that just like God? All the time willing to drop things in our lives. But yet the craving for meat had become so unbearable, abnormal. It was pulling them in a direction that was against what God had already given them. A craving. Something that was intense, obviously, in their soul. And they sought for meat. They actually said, and I read it in the message because it's, it just really said, when they said manna, 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 I just thought of some little kid stomping their foot. Now, man, I don't want no more manna, manna, manna. They were done with that manna stuff, let alone it was heavenly bread or heavenly delicacy. I mean, they never had it before in their life. They didn't even know where it come from except for the comfort of the sky, come from God. I'm going to tell you right now, one of the hardest things in the world is to understand that God is giving you exactly what he needs to give you. But if you don't watch it, you'll let your flesh and you'll let your spirit man turn sour. And all of a sudden now, you'll be desiring, craving something that is so intense, something that is anti what God is trying to do in your life. And I don't believe that it was God's will for them to always eat manna. It wasn't their, his will to always eat manna, but because the way they craved and how they were against it, they wanted to turn back to Egypt. Talked about the watermelons and leeks and them onions and all that. Doesn't really sound that great of a meal, and to be honest with you. Watermelons, leeks, and onions. But we find that they want, they really, what they really say in their heart desire was, is we would have been better off staying in Egypt. Here we are. The craving, something to meet. God decides that he's going to go ahead and do it. He does it so much so, he allows us to go our way. He allows us to go forward and forward. And all of a sudden, we get meat quail three feet deep. 
Anybody ever seen quail three feet deep? Nobody? Anybody? I didn't know quail were in the ocean. Read that in the Bible. It said he pushed them in from the sea. That's what the word says. And all of a sudden, there they were, three feet deep, as far as they could see. And they gathered it up. And it's like God, he'll give you sometimes what you want versus what you need. We allow our craving to put us in a position to open ourselves up to a thing that we don't even need. And because we craved it so much that we murmured against the man of God and we murmured against the division the, the we try to cause in, in the house of God and we came against Moses and we came against God. And all of a sudden now here's me three feet deep. What I loved about it is the word of God says that before they could even swallow the first bite, a plague came through and took them out. And they named the place after it the grave of the cravings. What are you craving tonight, church? That, that got into my spirit about a day or two ago. What am I craving? I'm telling you right now, there is a shift in the spirit in this place. It's already happened. And, and don't be so Pentecostal that you think that that's all that God has for you. I'm going to say it again. I've been in a many a service where, where tongues will go forward and, and Sister Betty got hers. She got her little touch and all that. Well, since Sister Betty got hers, I guess, I guess God's done with this place. What are you craving? I'm telling you right now, ever since the beginning, ever since that Adam and Eve stepped out of the will of God, there has been a God-sized hole inside of every human being. And I'm telling you right now from birth until now that you will try to fill it with everything that you can. If you have the Israelites mentality that you crave something to go ahead and feel the inside of this hole. We move forward in every which way we can. But I'm telling you right now that if what you crave is to fill it with just meat. Just anything this old world has. anything. This, what is it that you need tonight? What do we crave? God asked me, do you really crave revival? I'm just preaching to me now. If you really crave revival, you know what person who really craves revival is? He goes after it. He don't just mealy mouth and sit around and complain about it or talk about it. He goes after it. Now, Brother Don was all over my message this morning. Now, I didn't chastise him, don't worry. I told him about himself. He went to talking about blind Bartimaeus and all those other people. And what is it that you dream? And what's your ambition? What you craving? What is your craving? Oh, we find that, uh, that he already said it, that in, in, if my people who are called by name will seek my face, if they crave my face. Some of you got some sick land. You got issues in your life, but yet somebody or the world or yourself is telling you that you can fill it with every other thing in your life. But I'm telling you right now that if you can't seek, if you can't crave the face of God, that your land is never going to be healed. Simple human mechanics. What you feed gets stronger. That's why though in Romans 8 and 6 says to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. He laid it out as simple as he could. Whatever you feed. If you feed your carnal nature. If you feed what I want right now. It's one of, it's, it's, it's one of those odysseys that we can't always seem to wrap our mind around. Everything in moderation. The Bible says to not be drunk in excess. It doesn't say you can't drink. Well, I'd mess you up. I know. I ain't telling nobody to go out and get a drink. I, I promise you. But you're not going to go to hell for drinking a drink. What will happen is, though, is what you crave and what you really want. You'll try to fill that hole. But if you don't fill it with what's natural to what the hole is. See, there's a God-shaped size hole in your body. And if you try to fill it with a drink, or you'll get drunk. Or you'll get there. And you'll lose your soul. Trying to fill a hole. That you can't fill with this world and carnality. You can't have life in peace if you want to just be all about what I want right now. What's your craving? If you're craving something. What'll happen is you'll do what you need to to get it. Can all the uh, ex-addicts in the house go ahead and give me an Amen. You'll do whatever you got to do to get it when you need it or when you want it. When you crave something, you'll do it. You'll do stuff you said you'd never do. 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to step in your house right now. You've done some things that you said you would never do to get the things that you thought you didn't need, but you just wanted. We'll turn ourselves around. We'll, we'll, we'll go against our upbringing. We'll cheat on our wives and our husbands. We'll sell all we have. We'll steal from our mothers and fathers. We'll take our grandmother's last dime to fill a hole because we crave to be that way. We find ourselves that if we go down that road, we will be buried in Kibroth Hatava, the grave of craving. We find that if you don't walk the line, they say, I'm telling you right now that whoever this is for, please, please latch a hold of it. It's been a strong push already, and I'm just going to be real, real plain with you. I'll be real plain with you. There, there is something on the inside of you that is craving Jesus Christ more than it's ever craved you. He has come so close right now. He has ordained this service that you would be here, that I would preach this message, that it would be on my heart for the last couple of days about my cravings. I asked my wife what she craved whenever she was pregnant. And there some kids didn't really crave and some other things she craved, like, you know, French fries and, and uh, the Mexican pizzas from Taco Bell. I told her I craved that anyway. I, I'm not even pregnant. I want one of those right now. It's not scientific. There's differing theories. But I believe there have been many times where if you're, if you're um, not diabetic but the opposite, Anti-diabetic, that sounds good. That's not true. <laughs> Hypoglycemic. But if you ever need sugar, you know, all of a sudden you'll crave something sweet. If you have to have it, your body will tell you, I need that inside of me right now. And there is a deficiency that is in your life right now. And God has been trying to get closer and closer to you. The more and more he has drawn you to church, to church people, to service. He's, he's thrown it up on your internet. You've been on Facebook and church service after church service, post after post, scripture after scripture. And he has tried to maneuver you closer and closer because there is a craving that you must have. When that... When Jesus needed to go to Samaria, that's one of my favorite things. He said, he must need, I must needs go. There was a deficiency. There was something that needed to happen. Whenever he told that woman at the well that if you would just ask me for some water, I would give you water that you would never thirst ever again. My favorite part, now, I don't know how it's written that she said, give me this water. But to me, if I was there knowing good and well that I was living with somebody, it was not my husband. It was not who I was supposed to be. I was living in sin. I knew I was a dirty Samaritan dog, but yet this man offered me living water. Water, that I would never thirst or want again. That I would never have to work to get it. Give me this water. What are you really craving tonight? What you crave, you'll go after. What you crave, you'll go after. What you, you know, what the word says that where your where your heart is or whatever. There's your treasure. It's not where your want is. Where your heart is, and where your heart is is what you crave the most. And if I really crave revival, you know what my money will be. It'd be in revival. You know what my heart would be? It'd be in revival. You know what my prayer would be? It'd be in revival. <laughs> I feel that more than anything in this world right now. If I really want people to see Jesus, then my craving will be show them Jesus. That means that I have to put on Christ. I have to put on the mind of Christ. If what you really truly crave, if healing is what you crave, Jesus is what you go after. And my craving says everything about what I really want. Oh, when you were high on drugs and all that, you used to lie and tell all these other things. Your actions told what you really wanted. You ever had any friends or any family turn their back on you because they just couldn't trust you no more? Because they couldn't give you, they couldn't even give you $20 for your kids' uh, school project because they knew you was going to spend that 20 Whenever your family and friends turned their back, because what you craved took over your life. And we're just talking about old sinful nature here, but I'm telling you right now, there is a mirror that you need to look in tonight and understand that if I am not craving Christ, I am craving death. If I am not craving Christ, I am craving death. I'm sorry, that's a little strong. I understand, I understand. It's not how I wanted to do it. I wanted to preach faith and knock it right out of the park. I understand. 
I understand, but I'm telling you right now, what I crave is more than anything. Is no matter what I look like and no matter where I am, I must preach Christ. I must preach Christ. I have to show you what Christ came to do. When you're bound, you crave freedom. One of the saddest stories in the world is when Paul and Silas are praying. I know that's a great story, but let, just hold on. They're praying, they're praising God, and all of a sudden the earthquake comes, and all of a sudden the shackles fall off, and nobody leaves. You don't crave freedom? Man, if it had been me, I'd have, I'd have ran over Paul and Silas. They wouldn't have had a prayer. Them guards wouldn't even have had a chance to get scared and fall down and beg them and try to kill themselves. I'd have been already halfway down the street. I'd have been telling my people, man, you should have seen it. I don't know what happened to everybody else, but I was gone. I'm out of there. Do you crave what you really want to crave? I had to mop up the bathroom before service. That's why I wasn't up here praying for people. I had a little water issue in the sink. It was wet on the floor. I might toot my own horn. Do a lot of, I love a lot more of the stuff right here. But... God spoke to me while I was doing it. If you crave what I crave, if you crave to feel that God-shaped hole in your life, you mop the floor. You know why? Because it's the Lord's house. And I don't want one of y'all to go slip and break your neck. But you mop the floor. I don't go get somebody else to mop the floor. I don't stop somebody else from praising and worship. I'm prepared for my, my message. I, I prayed. I'm already, my heart's prepared to give you the word of God. I mopped the floor. Not because I want to be seen, Brother Lee. The only person that saw me is two kids. I ain't getting no toot my horn off of that. They ain't going to give me nothing. Except trouble. You know how them Snyders are. But what is driving you? You want to be seen? I'm telling you right now that if that's your mind, you have the mind of the seven sons of Sceva. If all it is that you want to be seen at church, if every time you touch somebody, all you're worried about is them falling out or them getting something or you to be seen as a person who prayed for somebody, if that's all you ever want to see, sooner or later, you're going to put your hands on the wrong one and then them devil's going to jump on you. Trust me, if all you want to do is be seen and have a microphone, we got one around here, I'll let you take it home. But it doesn't feel the whole. It doesn't feel the God-shaped hole. It doesn't feel what you crave tonight. It doesn't feel what God has already put on the inside of you. If you're pregnant with promise. If you're pregnant with promise. I talked about pregnant cravings. If you're pregnant with promise, your promise will crave the things it needs. And I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of promise in the word of God that's already should be on the inside of you. And if you've ever gotten the spirit of God on the inside of you, then I'm telling you right now, the spirit of God craves for things in your life. Oh, I can prove it to you by the word of God. He said it the other day. That in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Maybe he said it today. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's, that's a couple scriptures down. So that's Jesus. They're talking about Jesus. So the word is God. Then the word says it's made flesh and made Jesus. So Jesus is God, right? Well, then Jesus said he would send back the comforter. We say the Holy Spirit is Jesus' spirit. He comes back. So if you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, you must crave the word of God. You must crave God because it cannot be above or absent of itself. Anything that you're a part of cannot be absent of itself. You can't work at McDonald's without the uniform. Try it. They're going to send you home. You cannot have the spirit of God on the inside of you and have a deficiency and think that your pregnancy is going to happen. You cannot expect the promise to come to pass. If all you're doing is denial, you know what happens? Sadly, there's stories out there about people who are pregnant who cared nothing about the baby. And they starved themselves of everything that the baby needed. And just like that, if you don't watch it, you'll come into a presence like this tonight. And you'll starve yourself because you're scared of this or that. Or your flesh tells you you have to give up this or that. That's just the devil telling you that because God has always offered you living water. He offered living water to a woman who was not even in the will of God at the time. Just like the woman that he called dog. 
That woman at the well, there was a revival that happened in Samaria. I'm telling you right now, before that woman ever thought about being called a dog, Jesus came and told him, it's not your time yet, but it's coming. He said that one day, it won't matter where you're from. It won't matter where you're at, that you're going to be able to worship God in the truest form, in spirit and in truth. There was promise. It didn't matter. But you can come into a red hot service like this where God is moving up and down. He is pulling on you hard. And you can deprive the promise on the inside of you. And like a woman who's pregnant, who denies herself food and nutrients, it'll choke out the promise. When you're pregnant with promise, so you can't help the cravings. When you have a gift on the inside of you, you can't help it. Try it. I promise you right now. You know why I never played a whole lot of drums in the rock bands that I had a chance to play? Because my mama put it in my mind and in my heart when I was younger. If you take God's gift and you apply it to the world, he'll take it from you. And I believe that to 100%. So I never played. I got offered. Go play for this little band. Go play over there. No, sir. I had a gift. I had a promise on the inside of me that was craving it. The reason why I came to church here and the reason why I came back, there was a craving. Brother Don, I had a need in my life. I had a God-shaped hole in a place that was already riddled with everything else. But he told me that he would never leave me nor forsake me and that he came to set the captives free. And I'm telling you right now, if anybody was bound up, I was bound up. If anybody was bad off, I was bad off. I was a lot smaller than I, back then than I am now. I probably look like Elijah. And I'm telling you right now that there was a craving well up inside of me. And you, everyone has it. If you tell me you don't, you're lying. You're going to go to hell for lying. It says Lake of Fire. Everyone has a craving. Everyone has a craving. And if you don't watch what you're doing, if you care too much about the glitz and the lights, if you care too much about what other people think about you and the opinions of others, if you let the opinions of others rob you of the promise that you are pregnant with right now, I'm telling you right now, some of you are nine months pregnant with some promises, and here you are standing at the uh, precipice where you're about to move into a new season, and the last thing you need is to choke off the promise. God, I'm telling you right now, if you have an issue in your body, I would crave the ministry team. I would crave the altar. I crave the pool of Bethesda. He said it this morning. I'd write down every scripture about healing. And I would quote it every morning when I got up. And before I went to bed every night, I'd quote it again. And you know what I'd do all during the day? I'd go ahead and do that praying without ceasing. Every moment I had a spare chance where I said, you know what, God? You promised me I was going to have another child. Let me go ahead and thank you for the promise right now. Let me go ahead and requote that promise. Go ahead, let me go ahead and believe that God's going to do it. Do you really crave it? You know what I loved about that little woman? Didn't have no son. She made room for the prophet. When you desire something from God, when there's a promise on the inside of you, and all of a sudden that there's a craving on the inside, I have a craving for revival. You know what I won't do? I won't spend all my time going fishing. I like fishing, but I won't spend my time doing it. There's, there's, there's needs in your life, and yet we just pride ourselves. We tell ourselves that, that somehow we'll figure it out on our own, or, or we can't do what that pastor saying up there, that preacher, because they're going to want me to dress this way or do this. Oh, bull malarkey, as they say. It's a bunch of hobwash. All the old English way, whatever you want to call it, without me saying something I, I can't take back. You'll tell yourself. You'll allow the enemy to tell you that you can't make it in that church. Because they're going to require you to come up here and jump around and do all this other crazy stuff that you don't even believe in. or you don't, I'm telling you right now, if I had a need, if I was bound up in addiction right now, if I was just down on my luck and I knew that if I came up here that they can lay hands on me, I'm telling you right now, why don't you crave it? Why don't you come up here? If you're hungry, you'll eat. If you're tired, you're asleep. But yet all of a sudden, God has given you the promise that he can take it away. He can restore your mind. He can restore your mind to the way it was before you allowed the world to mar and riddle it with pain and tell you that you're nobody. He can restore your mind right now. 
Some of you battle the mind. There's more mind battles going on in here right now while I'm talking. You're trying to think about a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm telling you right now, I come against that spirit of deception that's trying to tell you that what you think somehow is better or bigger than God. There ain't a thought you can even have that's bigger than my God. And in one moment, he can erase 20 years of bad decisions. You're looking at it right now. I'm telling you right now, in one moment, he can take away every bad decision you ever made. And I had that craving on the inside of me that no matter what, I must see Jesus. The Bible also said that Joseph of Arimathea, after he died, he craved. He asked for it. It's the same Greek word, craveth, craved. It's the same Greek word in the New Testament. He craved the body of Jesus. It said because he was kingdom minded. Are you kingdom minded? I'm going to tell you right now, it's a whole lot more simpler than that. You don't even got to be kingdom minded. Are you you minded? Do you care about you? Do you want the things that God has promised you? Some of us got personal promises that God spoke through a prophet or a pastor or a teacher. And all of a sudden we got these personal promises. But there's so many other promises in the word of God. That lifts you up out of your decisions and out of your bad decisions and out of your, all your hardships. It takes you up out of that. He said that he would make you the head and not the tail. That you would be lenders to nations and not borrowers. How many of you would lend me a, a couple of thousand dollars right now if you had it? Right? I know Zebediah would. But you, you know right now that if you, if you don't have it, what does that do for me? But yet I'm dealing with the God of the universe that says that he owns all the cattle and all, the, all them hilltops. He owns everything in this world. And all of a sudden, all I had to do, the Bible says, if I would just ask anything believing in his name, that it would be done for me. But what am I really craving? If I'm really even self-sufficient, if I, if I think that I can make it, where has that ever got me in life? Where has that ever put me in life if I could try to twist it and turn it? Somebody is pregnant with promise right now. There's something that God has put on the inside of you that you don't even barely believe sometimes. I hear you crying out. I hear you crying out in my mind right now. I hear you crying out. You want it more than anything in this world. But you tell yourself you're not worthy, that it can't happen. And you use that algebra against you, that X, Y, and Z. These are the issues that you have and you can't see past them. But do you really crave the promise? Do you really want healing? Do you really want salvation? Some of you are scared to death that you ain't going to make it. That you're going to leave behind people who will never know that God is God. Because you feel like you failed your children. You feel like you failed your family. You haven't told them about Jesus. Lift your hands right now. Just lift your hands. Lord, I ask you right now, Lord Jesus, move in this place. Hallelujah, uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 It's simple. It's real simple. I'm going to make it easy for you. Kingdom math. You've repented. It makes you square with the king. He said he'd forgive you, so you're forgiven. Then he said that not only would you be forgiven, but he wants you to put his name on you in baptism. He wants to wash away every bit of who the old man was. Brother Don pushed earlier because there's baptism that needs to happen. Somebody's soul needs to be washed. You're in this place. Make your election sure. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Well, I'm just going to hit you with all the word I can give you. All these things will be added to you. Some of you have stopped seeking. You have denied your cravings and your promise. It's on life support. Oh, Jesus. It's not too late. That's a lie from the devil. It's not too late and all the issues standing in front of your promise. You just stop denying your craving. Oh, we know in the middle of the night you wish you were in church. I hear you. 
in the middle of the night you cry out you have these horrible dreams you're blaming it on the devil but really it's your mind being twisted because you have a God shaped hole and your body and your spirit may crave the Holy Spirit he read the scripture to you he quoted it to you earlier if you repent and you're baptized in Jesus' name, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Then right after that, it says the promise is to everybody. Everybody. Here you are with a God-shaped hole in your life. With a need tonight. A real need. God's about to do it in your life. If you just crave his feet. Crave his hands. Oh, I know you want to be the head and not the tail, and that's all great. But I want to be where Mary was. I want to be at his feet because I desire to see Jesus' will be done. And he had to be anointed for burial. She came in at the pivotal point of his ministry to fulfill what needed to be done. And I want to be her. I want to be there at Jesus' feet. I have that hole where I am, so I must crave. I crave his word. I crave his spirit. I crave to worship. I crave more services. I crave them long revivals. Oh, I know it's hard on everybody, but I crave it. The word of God says that we should not forsake the assembly of ourselves, especially in the last days when he knows he is coming back. Some of you have a timer set on your heart. You feel that your time is ticking away. You crave the eternal. Paul said that I don't want to just crave. I don't want to just die. You know, he said, I didn't want to kill myself, I, I, but I want to be clothed with immortality. Do you know if your election is sure? Somebody needs salvation. That's very clear. The word is going forth. Everybody has prayed. We've had moving. The, the, the songs have been chosen. And, and pastors already spoke. And the word is going forth. And everyone feels it in here. Is your election sure? I crave to be with Jesus. I, I crave to be where he wants me to be. I know for a fact that I am in the right place right now. My whole life was not a lie. I was not meant to be something different. I, if I would have stayed on the track, if I'd have never messed up, I'd have been some snotty-nosed preacher somewhere thinking I was better than everybody else. But he had to save me. He had to come down. He had to, to help me. He had to build me back up. There was a hole that he had to fill in my life so that I would be here right now. Though I knew I was in the right place. And as much as I'm pulling for you right now, it's not all about you. I had to know that I was in the right place. You'll understand when he starts to fill that hole, God, that hole gets bigger. I crave the spirit of God. I crave revival. I crave new souls. I crave, I crave, I crave. Because God has a plan for this world that none should perish, that all should see salvation. And that means you, and that means me, my family, your family, our children, and your children. But if I crave meat, if I crave something outside of the will of God, I will be buried in the grave of craving. Stand to your feet. Oh, Jesus. What are you craving tonight? I'm telling you right now that if you're in this place and you have any need whatsoever, that's what you're craving. You're craving the answer to all answers. Not only are you craving to be filled with the Spirit of God so it can be the help, so that it can lift you up, where it said that it would help you, it would guide you, it would teach you what to say. It would go ahead and remind you what God has already said to you, what the Word of God is. All these things are scriptural. That's what the Holy Ghost does in your life. It's scripture. But not only that, but it would set your feet on a path to not only live an overcoming life here, but to one day be on streets of gold with Christ. Are you craving the eternal? You crave to be whole, to be well? If you do, the woman with the issue of blood is exactly where you need to get your cue. She craved healing so much. 
that she crawled on her hands and knees and did something that was not scriptural, but it was faith. It was all about faith. There was no scripture in the Bible, in the Old Testament, anywhere about the hem of any garment. But yet her craving said, I must get to Jesus. I have to get to Jesus. And if I could just touch something that he touched. Some of you are so worried about being a disciple of Jesus. If you could just get her spirit in you and understand that if you could just get close. If you could just touch the fringe of what this is. You're looking at being made whole. Some 12-year experience that you wish you could forget. God is willing to heal every wound, every deed, everything you ever did. All the people you stabbed in the back. Everyone that you cheated and lied to. He is willing to make that go away. He's willing to change you. He's willing to lift you up and make you everything. But what are you really craving tonight? You're going to have to make it sure. You're going to have to make the choice yourself. Where will I end up and what is it that I truly want? He said it this morning. What's your dream? What's your ambition? And what do you want? Because I'm telling you right now that if you want everlasting life, if you want to be made whole, if you want your family to be together, if you want wholeness, if you want that he be healed, your craving should lead you to the altar. It'll lead you to Christ. It'll lead you to every service, everything that they preach, every word that they say, everything that they post. I'm telling you right now, I can't get enough of Jesus because I need him more than I did when I was bound up in drugs. I need him more because I crave revival. I crave Jesus. Ministry team, come out front. Sister Sheila, you can start the music. Right now, if you have a craving, if there's a need, there's something in your, there's something on the inside of you that says that only God can do it for me. There's a path that you need to walk. These men are down here, they'll lay hands on you. But I'm telling you right now that if you really want what you feel on the inside of you, Michael, come down front. Brother Charles, come down front. God is about to do something in your life. I feel like all that stuff that we've been talking about, all the promises are leading up to a moment. I feel it right now that all of a sudden he's saying, you know what, y'all? You come to me, I'm coming to you. Everything that he ever spoken to you is about to be released in your life. Lord, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I, Lord, I lose every promise. I, Lord, let him crave. Lord, your hands and feet right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, church. If you got a need, come on down front. Come on down front. It's time. It's time to receive what God has already promised. But you must crave it. Crave it. All right, if you have a healing, you need a healing of the mind. There's a lot of mind going on in here. If you got a healing of the mind, you need to come down front and get prayed for. God is about to set you free and restore the sanity that you feel like has been taken from you. Make it happen. 